Hey YouTube, welcome to the Bubba Continuum. It is, uh, what is it? December the 12th. I know that because I paid one of my credit card bills today. I always know the dates. Um, I just wanted to put up a quick video. I haven't posted anything in a while because for several days I've been working on a shooting bench. I've been, put, I've been using my welder, one of my welders, to, to uh, put a shooting bench together. It turns out there's much more to shooting benches than, than you would think. You can't just build an L-shaped table and say, well, I'm done. Um, there, there's, if you really want to shoot well, especially at long distances, there are certain things you got to know. And so I found those things out and now I'm building a bench. And I'll, I guess I'll throw up a, a photo of the frame that I finished today. So uh, I have, anyway, I haven't been doing uh, videos over the last couple of days because of that. I just wanted to uh, let everyone know something I learned about if, if you're, you know, if you're, if you're aware of what's going on around you, you probably knew this two months ago, but I am not like that. I don't, I avoid reading the news. I just don't have that much interest in it and, uh, make them really deliberately avoiding the election news. So things are happening in America and, uh, I'm blissfully unaware of many of them. So something, I'll tell you about something that surprised me and maybe it won't surprise you at all. Um, as I said, I'm, tr I'm trying to avoid looking at the election news, but uh, I did hear that a Christian leader named Hank Kuhneman had made some kind of prophecy about how Trump was going to end up being elected no matter what. Uh, he didn't say no matter what. He said, I don't remember exactly what he said. You can look it up on YouTube. But he's, anyway, he said Trump was going to end up being inaugurated again. And he's not the only one. Several people have done that, done this. And I keep feeling when I pray that God keeps saying, "Yeah." And, and you know, look, when you actually accidentally saw some news the other day, I saw one story. And it was about how some lawsuit or another, the Supreme Court had refused to hear it because of a lack of standing. People aren't lawyers; they don't know what that means. So they go, "Oh, the, the lawsuit's been thrown out. It was a garbage lawsuit." That's not really the way. It, well, that's not the way it works with lack of standing. Lack of standing just means you are not the person who should have filed the lawsuit. For example, if your next door neighbor um, you know, accidentally poisons your hedge and you tell me about it, I can't sue your next door neighbor because I'm not the one who was damaged. You're, you're, you have to sue. I, I would not have standing. So it, do, it doesn't mean it's a bad lawsuit. It just means the wrong person filed it, more or less. Anyway, I saw this, this article and it got me thinking about Hank Kuhneman and this prophecy that he had made. Um, so I went to YouTube to see if I could find the prophecy because I was curious about it. I, f I feel like I'm not cheating. I'm not, I'm not looking at news if I look at a prophecy. I mean, it's not the same thing as, you know, journalism. So I went to this video and I noticed at the bottom of it, YouTube had put a disclaimer. I don't know why I'm smiling when I, when I say this because it's, it's horrible. I mean, it's funny at the same time, but it's horrible. I guess, uh, I guess how funny it is depends on how, how hard you're being pinched. Um, YouTube is running disclaimers now on prophecy videos, misinformation disclaimers. This, this disclaimer said all this stuff about how Biden had been certified as the president-elect or, you know, something like that. And it wasn't, it wasn't on a conspiracy video. It, it wasn't attached to a, a journalism video. Um, it was a prophecy video. I mean... It was a religious video. It was a, it was a video that someone put out in order to pass on something that he claimed to believe God told him. And I say claim to believe because, I, you know, I don't know uh, whether Hank Kuhneman's a prophet or not. His, his, his uh, last name is spelled K-U-N-N-E-M-A-N. -N -E you know, some people say he's a prophet. There's some people out there who think Benny Hinn is a prophet, which is, you know, not true. Um so I don't know. I, don't, I had no idea whether this guy's a prophet or not. He was on Sid Roth's show. Sid Roth, it's supernatural, the TV show that he has. Sometimes Sid, Sid Roth has wonderful people on that show, and sometimes he has utter buffoons on the show. And uh, you know, you have to ask the Holy Spirit and try to figure out which is, you know, which group a person belongs to when they appear. So anyway, I'm not, I'm not saying that Hank Kuhneman's a prophet. I just wanted to hear what he said because, for all I know, he could be a prophet. I don't know. So anyway, that's why I say he claims to be a prophet, because I, I don't want to assert that he is or is not. I have no idea. I, I sort of suspect that he might be a prophet, and I'll, there's kind of a funny reason for it. I went on the internet trying to find out if he had given any false prophecies, and I couldn't find any. So uh, 
that's pretty good evidence that someone's not a, not a false prophet because if someone is a false prophet, they'll have a long track record of very obviously false uh, prophecies. And people on the political left, let's face it, they belong to the Antichrist, they're the children of darkness, uh, they among others, they dig these things up and they put them on their websites. You know, they'll have a they'll have websites called rightwingkookwatch.com and they'll they'll say, oh, this person's a false prophet. He said this and it didn't happen. And uh, certain Christians also like to do this kind of thing. Um, so I couldn't find anything. I found people saying that he, he uh, was a false prophet because he said cancer would be cured. And, um, you know, I, I, did he give it a certain date? Did he say it would be cured in a certain way? They didn't say anything about that. So, I, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe, I mean, was he talking about uh, divine healing, which absolutely does happen? And is documented. The funny thing about it is, whenever whenever it happens, you know, people say, "Oh, there's no documented miracles." And then when a miracle is documented, they say, "Oh, that one's fake." Uh, there's my phone, which I forgot to mute. Anyway, uh, there were, if if it, it seems to me, I mean, if I were trying to debunk a false prophecy that Hank Kuhneman or somebody else made, um, I would look for a really clearly false prophecy. I would, you know, it would have to be like. Cancer is going to be cured by mainstream medical science as of July 1st, 2020, something like that. Uh, you know, you can kind of, you can pretty well tell whether a prophecy like that has come true or not. But when someone just makes a vague prediction that uh, cancer is going to be cured in the future, that, that's hard to debunk. So I couldn't find anything uh, to suggest that he was a false prophet. So I don't know, maybe, maybe he is a real prophet. I have no idea. I don't know whether Trump is going to make it or not. Uh, a lot of people... Well, Google is one example. A lot of people believe that uh, once once a candidate wins the election and the state certify them, they think the election is over. And of course, that's not true. The electors have to meet and ultimately the courts decide. The courts are the ones who decide who, who the president is. A lot of things can happen between now and, and the inauguration. So uh, at least until the inauguration, I, you know, for all I know, the, the game is still on. And truthfully, even after the inauguration, there are conceivable scenarios in which uh, Biden could be removed and Trump could be put in. So, um, I, I, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say that Hank Kuhneman is a false prophet because Google has said that uh, the states have certified that Biden is the winner. But it's disturbing that, that Google is putting uh, disclaimers on prophecy, you know, fake news disclaimers. It's so funny. Conservatives... Uh, you know, who are aligned with the Christian movement, um, sort of. We're the ones who came out with the, the term fake news. Donald Trump was the one who popularized that. And, it, you know, it, it really does exist. Fake news is everywhere. And suddenly people on the left are trying to take that away from us. They're trying to make it their, they're not taking the phrase away. They still, but they say the they say the phrase fake news with a sneer as though the people at CNN who lie constantly, um, you know, or like, or like the Oracle of Delphi, they, they're infallible. Anyway, they're, they've kind of tried to take it away from us, the, the concept of fake news, and, and, and they're saying anyone who says anything good about President Trump is a liar. Anyone who says uh, anything bad about the left is a liar. And, and now, you know, they're, they're attacking someone who claims to be a prophet. Well, that's just ridiculous. I mean... Do they do they put disclaimers on St. Francis's videos? St. Francis, excuse me, that's, maybe that's what he thinks he is. Uh, if the, on, on Pope Francis's videos, if he says if he makes a pronouncement against you know homosexuality or adultery or something like that, like that are they going to go and put a disclaimer on his video? Um, how bad is he going to get? How how far are they going to reach? I've seen Christians now on other channels. Um, talking about moving to other platforms. I saw a lady today talking about moving to something called Rumble, which I haven't seen. And there's also a platform called Parlor, which conservatives like, and there's there's Full 30 for gun people, and then there's something called Gab, which I have not personally uh, seen. I think if you I think if you sign up for Gab, you're pretty much asking for an IRS audit and, you know, a BATF raid. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I I think that I think uh you're pretty well targeted by the deep state for uh for every reason imaginable once you sign up for Gab. Um, so I have not done that. I don't want to anyway. I'm, I'm not primarily a conservative. I'm a, I'm a Christian. You know, conserv conservatism and Christianity tend to go hand in hand. But uh, 
Christianity is the thing, you know, conservatism is incidental. So I'm, I'm, not, one, I'm not a militia nut, I, although I did buy a plate carrier the other day. I feel so stupid wearing this thing. I put it on, you know, I, I don't know if I mentioned it in another video, but when you wear this thing, you feel like a hot dog in a very stiff bun. It's the most uncomfortable thing in the world. And you just feel stupid wearing it because you look stupid. I, I put this thing out, I'm sitting here thinking, do I really want to live in a world where you have to wear a thing like this to go out and get your mail? Just shoot me, you know, just make an appointment. I'll walk outside and you can shoot me in the head. I'd rather just go to heaven, you know. You can have this place. You want to fight that hard? I mean, is this what you want to fight over? This, this mess, this horrible place that we've destroyed, that we've turned into a, a realm of suffering and injustice, unfairness, cruelty to the weak? Is it really worth hanging on to? I mean, to the point where you have to walk around in a ridiculous getup and a Kevlar helmet? You know, I've got guns and I've got ammunition. I love to shoot. But I'm just not enthusiastic about uh, scrapping over this ball of dirt. Well, so a lot of Christians are going to these other platforms. And they, they seem to think this is the answer. And, you know, I disagree. I think it's a total waste of time. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Um, I, you know, conservative alternate platforms, they've been around for a long time. They don't go anywhere. There's a big difference between the mainstream platforms and the little weird conservative platforms. And that difference is there's no diversity in the conservative platforms. I don't mean that there are no black people there. That's not what I mean. I mean, everybody there is either conservative or Christian or whatever it is the platform is set up for. And there's no significant interaction with the people we were put on this earth to reach. <laughs> You know, that's pretty bad. I mean, if I'm on Twitter or something, which I'm not, but if I were and I were putting up posts, there would be some possibility that, that uh, an unsaved person could read something I wrote and be transformed by it. By, you know, it might investigate it, might ask God to prove that he's real and, and benefit from it. But uh, the opportunities are kind of limited on things like Rumble and Parler and so forth. Uh, and... You know, the numbers just aren't there. You, it's like, uh, you know, it's like people's, the, exp the old expression, it's like yelling into the toilet. Um, you know, you can go to YouTube and put a video up and, and reach 8 million people. And you can go to Rumble and what, what are you, you going to get? 55 people, 70 people, a maybe 1,000. And they all agree with you already. So what's the point? So um, I, I have very little confidence in these things. And the, the thing that bugs me about it on a, a fundamental and spiritual level is this. The Internet is the Antichrist's way of, I've said this before, it's his way of imitating the spirit of holiness, the Holy Spirit. We're supposed to be connected to the Holy Spirit. We're all supposed to be praying in tongues. We're all supposed to be uh, working to prophesy and receive knowledge and revelation, uh, discerning of spirits, so, and so forth. We're supposed to be connected by the spirit of holiness. The spirit of holiness is the thing that Satan is imitating when he tries to build the internet. It's a fake. It's a copy. It's inferior. Satan, I've said this before, Satan can't be everywhere at once. He's not, God is omniscient and Satan is not. So in order to reach a lot of people, Satan needs things like the internet. It's, it's kind of pathetic because it shows how, how weak and, you know, useless he is. Uh, so Satan is using the internet to reach people and inform them and bind them together and turn them into his body. And it's sad to see Christians feeling left out because they can't do the same thing using the same platforms. There's, instead of saying, boy, I'm glad we've got the spirit of holiness to guide us and we don't need that garbage, they're saying, oh, we're being thrown off YouTube, we're being thrown off Twitter, we're being thrown off Facebook. Oh, it's so unjust. We have to fight this. We have to have our own pathetic, useless, doomed platforms that are never going to go anywhere. You don't need these, these things. You need to get connected to the Holy Spirit, and you need to hear from Him in real time and get His guidance. You need to pray in tongues a lot every day, like two hours, three hours. Um... God will guide you and he will protect you. The Bible says this. You don't, you don't need flash mobs. You don't need text messages. So uh, it's, it's, it's disturbing to see the Christians don't understand this yet. Running from one platform to another is not going to save you. It's, it's, it's all carnal. It's not, it's not the solution. 
the great thing about hearing from the Holy Spirit is you don't have to rely on on uh, what's his name Zuckerberg or or the or the you know Jack Dorsey is that his name the the Twitter guy or the Google kids. You don't have to de rely on these emotionally underdeveloped, you know, le uh, all left brain nerds who have no compassion and no no hearts. You don't have to rely on these these people who have no ethics to uh, to look after you. The Holy Spirit will look after you. He'll tell you what to do. That's that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be connected by Him, so that when the waters rise, He lifts us above them. And we don't know that because the, the Christian church has been teaching against the Holy Spirit for 2,000 years. That's probably Satan's biggest accomplishment was getting us to, to condemn prayer in tongues and condemn the baptism with the Holy Spirit. I, I, people are so full of crazy doctrine. The other day, somebody, somebody came to one of my videos and started saying, you don't have to be baptized with water, and once you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you never sin again. And where he got this stuff, I don't even know. He's wrote these big, long comments, and I just, you know, refuted them, which is not hard to do. I mean, think of all the Holy Spirit-filled people you know who still sin from time to time. I certainly do. Sorry to tell you, I'm not perfect. And I, I, I mentioned people in the, the apostles that, you know, they continued to sin from time to time. They did things that were stupid. They made mistakes. I shouldn't say stupid. They did things that were wrong. They, they made errors. Peter and Paul argued. Paul and Barnabas argued. Paul seemed to argue a lot with people. Paul made errors. And I'm not saying the Bible is full of mistakes. I'm saying it records people's mistakes. It, it uh, describes them. So uh, the idea that people suddenly stop sinning when they're full of the Holy Spirit is crazy. And his idea, I said, I mentioned these things, and he was like, he was saying things like, you know, if you still sin, well, it just means you were never a believer to begin with. Like, I'll tell you what. You know, in order to in order to experience persecution from the Antichrist children, you know, first you've got to get past the persecution that the church lays on you. Where am I going with this? I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm going to. It's what I'm going to say is this: other people are saying things like things like I'm going to be careful what I say on the internet. I'm going to be careful what I say on YouTube. I'll go. If you really want to know what I think, go to this other platform where you and twelve other people will hear me say what I really think. And you know what? I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to sit right here. I'm going to say exactly what I think. And when YouTube pulls the plug, well, then I'll have more free time because uh, I won't have to deal with YouTube videos. So uh, that's my advice to you. Say whatever you think is right. Don't worry about YouTube. Don't worry about offending these little disturbed individuals that uh, that run these companies. These these You know, I'm tempted to call them soulless people. They're very small, and God is infinite. And he, he's promised to look out for us, and he will do it, but you gotta do things his way. So uh, I don't care. You know what? Cancel my channel, pull the plug, throw me off the internet, couldn't care less. Uh, I always say, I've always said in the past, don't subscribe, don't like, don't tell your friends about it, <laughs> you know? Don't come back. I don't care if you watch or not. It makes no difference to me. I, I put these videos up because uh, either because uh, I, I wanna make myself happy, or because I think that I have something to say that can, that can help other people that God would like me to say. And that's about it. You know, I'm never going to try to make money off YouTube. I'm never going to, I'm never going to be excited about how many subscribers I have. Couldn't care less. Pull the plug. Makes no difference to me. And I think you should have the same attitude too. I don't depend on this garbage. I'm not going to lie on my back and, and try to get the Google kids to rub my belly. Neither should you. We're supposed to be royalty. It's not supposed to be something we're supposed to be arrogant about. But at least we should know what we are. The people and spirits that are against us, they're the lower classes of, of creation. You know, when you, if you look at all creation, you look at the natural realm and the, and the supernatural realm, these are the, the ghetto people. These are the people who are on the bottom that are never going to make it. The people that have no power. The, the spirits that have no power, the, the doomed spirits, the outlaw spirits. I've said before, you know, Satan and the spirits that, that uh, serve him, they're... They're like the crazy family at the end of the block that never mows the yard and has broken windows. And, you know, whenever, whenever something disappears in the neighborhood, people think it ended up in that house. That's, you know, their, their, their kids go to jail. Their daughters get abortions. They grow weed in the backyard. That's, that's what Satan's spirits are. Uh, they're like compared to God and the spirits that follow him and, and compared to his children. You know, these, aren't, these aren't creatures you should fear or, or respect. I mean, when it comes to the people, well, of course you should love and forgive and, and try to help them. But uh, the idea of running from them, that, you know, that doesn't make any sense. There's, there's no example of Jesus doing that.
I, I admit he did avoid people sometimes, but he, he never crawled, never lost an argument, never expressed fear of any kind. So uh, I, I don't know. I don't see how you can do those things and then think you're doing what a Christian is supposed to do. You're not coming to resemble Christ if you're crawling around in front of these people. Um, so get in touch with the Holy Spirit. You're going to get thrown off. If you're a Christian, if you're a real Christian, I don't mean a feel-good Christian, a Joel Osteen Christian, a, you know, a, a leftist Catholic Christian who thinks the Pope is a saint. I don't mean that kind of Christian, but if you're a real Christian who's in touch with the, with the Holy Spirit and uh, spends time with God every day and prays in tongues and all that, um, if you're that if you're that type of person, you're, you're going to be fine, and uh, you don't need these people to validate your existence or give you a platform. If 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 God, if God wants you to have a platform, you'll get it. Don't worry. I mean, hard times are coming, terrible times are coming, but don't worry. They're not for you. They're not for you. You shouldn't even be here when these things happen. There's a plan to remove us from the world. And while we're here, you know, we try to reach people and we pray for them and so forth. But when when, when people get so filthy and, and uh, unbearable and unteachable that there's no point in leaving us here, we're, we're going to be pulled out. God is not a bad manager. He's not. He's not going to waste. Uh, he's not going to waste his crop for no for no dis discernible reason. He's he's not going to do that. He, there has to be a reason for us to be here. He's not going to leave us down here where we are tempted, and, and some of us are going to be lost and lose our salvation um, for no good reason. You know, when people are, are just too hard headed and evil to be changed by our presence, by our prayers, and by our efforts. Okay, so uh, I I don't think you'll see me on Rumble. I don't know. Maybe I'll maybe I'll join just to see what it's about. But uh, I, you're you're not going to see me running from the YouTube people and and uh, I don't know trying to make my last stand on Gab. <laughs> it, sh it just won't happen, and it, it shouldn't happen. It's not necessary. So I, I hope this is a blessing to you, and I hope you'll be encouraged and and stop being afraid of these. Uh, these stunted individuals who really need really need God's help because they are in deep, deep trouble. And if you're in touch with God, you are not in trouble. That's all. Have a good day.